So the third major category or class of data encoding are floating point numbers. And it's unfortunately also the hardest to understand. Why? Well, because floating point numbers are decimals and decimals are messy. And so the IEEE, which is the group that came up with the most common representation of floating point numbers, agreed upon a standard, uh, or two standards actually, with which to encode decimal numbers. And you may have heard of these terms. This is called single precision or double precision floating point numbers. These are actually represented in IEEE specifications. Doubles are represented in IEEE 754. Uh, I forget which one singles are um, are represented in. Singles, I believe, are, are also 754. I think it's all in the same spot, all in the same IEEE space, all in the same, I, same IEEE document. And what this is, is uh, a reference to the amount of memory that it takes. A single will use up 32 bits of information to represent a number, a single floating point number. Now that can be a one, a two, or a five, but can also be 7.372, or negative 4.354 times 10 to the negative 60. These are scientific numbers, right? Scientific precision numbers. Singles got 32 bits, and double, creatively, is simply double that size. They're 64 bits. Right, four bytes, eight bytes. Now you might be saying, that's a lot of information. Why do we need so much information? Well, we need it because, believe it or not, with this standard, with this IEEE 754, I'm missing an E, 754 standard for defining floating point numbers, especially with double precision, we have been able to represent pretty much everything that we want to do. Now, of course, you can certainly do bigger than this. They have, you know, they have what's called the quads, which are 128, um, or octs, which are two, or octuples, which are 256 bits, but they're very, very rarely used. Um, the vast majority of, the overwhelming majority of, of floating point numbers are doing things at doubles, and some of them, to be efficient, are doing things at singles. But with these doubles, we've been able to represent enormous spaces, astronomical lengths of distances of numbers, right? How many meters are between two distant nebula in the, in the, in the sky? All the way down to things at the nanoscale. How close are these two atoms to each other in meters? 10 to the negative something crazy. Floating point precision gives us the ability to address huge and very, very small exponents all at the same time while still making good trade-offs for being able to represent all of those digits and, and significance in a way that makes sense. What am I talking about here? Let's begin to think about it. Well, the encoding scheme is a little different than what, anything we've seen before. It's not as pretty. It still happens in these chunks, but I'm gonna put up the encoding scheme for doubles. The encoding scheme for doubles looks like this, 64 bits, and it's broken up into three sections. The very first bit goes for the sign. If it's a positive number or a negative number, that's what that first bit is. So far, so good, right? Easy to understand. Not that hard, right? This is your plus or minus. The next 11 bits, the next 11 bits go to the exponent. And it's an exponent of power of two. So. This number is gonna be represented as something times two to the exponent. And now it's technically not exactly this 11-bit number. This is an 11-bit integer, just as you always, uh, I've taught you uh, as I've reviewed in the integers section. But technically it's not raising it straight to the exponent, it's actually shifting it over by, by you know, a number, it's actually shifting it over by 1,023. That has everything to do with centering and whatnot. I don't want to really go into details. It's not that important. But just think of this as representing the exponent of the number. We think about scientific numbers, right, as 10 to the something, right, times 10 to the something. Well, this is binary land, right? And so we're actually raising something times 2 to whatever exponent is represented in this green section. And then over here, we've got our fraction. 
Our fraction, also known as our significand, is just a 52-bit integer that goes in here. And that's all there is to it, right? It's just a 52-bit number. And we represent that as roughly something on the order of 16 significant digits. That's what 52 bits gets you, approximately 15, almost 16 digits of number. And the reason I'm saying that, and I'm not saying what the range is, is because the range is entirely dependent on the exponent. And thus the precision that you have scales in floating point with the exponent of interest. This may seem a little weird, but it actually makes a lot of sense. If you are talking about a number like 1, 2, 3, 5, 100, 15, 1,000, 10,000, 15,000, 250 million, you might want to get exactly the right number all the way down to the ones position. Maybe you even want to go beyond the ones position, right? 250 million, 752, right? 250 million, 732, 645, that's all precise, time, dot, 7, 3, 6, 2, 4, blah, 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 right? Keep going. Floating point numbers can represent this number precisely all the way out to 15 digits, 16 digits of precision. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, we get one more, two more, 7, 6. We don't get any more. That's it. If you put any more digits after this, they will not be saved in this encoding scheme. You can't get it. It's too, it's, it's too high. But when you have a number as large as 250 million, blah, 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 and the fact that you can go all the way out to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven digits past the decimal point using this encoding scheme isn't bad. That's pretty decent. As you get larger and larger, though, the resolution that you are able to represent gets smaller and smaller. Why? Because floating point numbers and floating point precision assumes that you are much more interested in the beginning aspects of your number than you are the end aspects. Meaning if this number wasn't 250 million, but it was 250, say, trillion, with many, many more zeros that way, right? Or quadrillion with even more uh, of the floating point number right, of uh, the decimal point going that way, then how much do you care what is way back here towards the end of a number that has that many zeros after it before you even get to the decimal point? Do you even care what the ones position is when you're talking about a number as large as 250 quadrillion? The answer is you probably don't. And if you do, then well, guess what? You don't need doubles anymore. You need something bigger. But the vast majority of cases, you don't need all the number all the way precise, especially if your exponent is, you know, if you're talking about 10 to the 250 or 10 to the, you know, 650 or 675, you don't care what the one's position value is. Really, what you get is a constant 15 digits of significance and you can put the decimal point anywhere you want. And this is what floating point lets you do. It lets you take these six, 15 digits, represent it as an important number for you to keep, and you get to take this and push that decimal point anywhere within an incredibly large space and represent your number. Very, very clever. It's an extremely good and efficient way to pack as much range of numbers to cover with as few bits packed in as tightly as possible. If you wanted to do this instead with fixed numbers, where you represented, you know, what's called fixed point numbers, which we don't, it's very, very uh, uncommonly used. Um, but fixed point math is something that exists, and there are some uses for it. It's just not very common. Fixed point mathematics just is, is very simple. And it simply says, okay, we have some integer uh, of bits here. Let's say we're going to give it, let's say you're going to do fixed point math with, with uh, an, uh, a uint 8 or an int 8 here, and then you're going to put a dot, and you're going to put another uint 8 afterwards it. And so any number that you want to represent in the decimal point is represented here by this second byte, and the first one here is represented here. That's 16 bits of information that you're representing. How about we do it another way? Um, 
Yeah, that's 16 bits of information that you're encoding, but the biggest number you can represent here, right, in the UN8 is 255. And all the way out here, you can go from 0 to 255 past the decimal point. So the biggest number, right, the most precise number is, you know, something dot two something. And it's not very useful, right, with three significant digits. You can get all the way up to 0 0.9, right, 0 0.99 but you can't do 0.99, you stop at 0.255, you can't do 0.256. So this mechanism of encoding information, not so useful, right? This is called fixed point, and it's not really used. Floating point, much more common, way more effective, and, and understanding that this is one of the ways, the most common ways in which computers represent decimal numbers is critical because it's the third category of data encoding.